Good morning and welcome to online worship at the Mayville and Campbellsport United Methodist Churches on this, the first Sunday after Christmas. My name is Steve Delano and we're so glad that you're worshiping with us today. Please join me in prayer. God of hope and light, your good news has been emblazoned across the skies. The great starry night of Jesus' birth, sung by angels, celebrated by shepherds, witnessed by animals. You have given to us a new chance, a reminder of your continual love for us. Be with us in this worship, we pray. Guide our thoughts, our lives, our spirits. Heal and restore us, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Joy to the World. This hymn was written by Isaac Watts. Let us sing together. Our New Testament reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Hear these words. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under. According to the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee, there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene.
Today's passage has a lot packed into its 11 verses. We have the evil ruler Herod doing whatever is necessary to maintain the power of his throne. There's Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, protecting the child and his family. We have an angel of God guiding Joseph through his dreams. And of course, there's baby Jesus, the main character of the good news. King Herod was a ruthless ruler. He eliminated all threats to his kingdom. In the verses leading up to today's text, Herod had been visited by the wise men, the Magi, who were seeking the Messiah, the King of the Jews. When Herod heard this, he was livid. He couldn't have the Israelites uniting and coming together to worship a Savior and to give their allegiance to someone other than him. He had planned to eliminate this threat to his power. So he would use these unsuspecting wise men to find out where this supposed Messiah was. There was a slight problem with his plan. The Magi followed the star to Bethlehem and found the Christ child. They were overjoyed and paid homage to the child with, and gave him expensive gifts. In Matthew chapter 2, we learn that the wise men were visited by an angel. From verse 12, we hear, And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thus, Herod's plan was thwarted. When he learned that he had been deceived by the wise men, he came up with an even more despicable plan to rid him of this problem. It became known as the Massacre of the Innocents. Herod had all of the children under two years of age in the Bethlehem area killed. He thought that this would surely eliminate the threat. At the same time as this massacre was being planned, an angel visited Joseph in a dream. The angel commanded that Joseph take Jesus and his mother Mary to Egypt. So in the middle of the night, Joseph and family fled to Egypt. This is quite a reversal of Israelite history. The Hebrew people had been in bondage in Egypt hundreds of years before. At that time, Moses delivered his people out of Egypt, out of their slavery. Of course, God provided Moses with the words and the actions to lead his people and to wear down Pharaoh, the Egyptian ruler. And now Joseph and family flee to Egypt for safety. In both cases, God protected his people the Hebrew people of Moses, and now the Christ child, the Son of God. Just a few years later, King Herod dies. Again, the angel of God visits Joseph in a dream with news that the child's life is no longer in danger. They should return to Israel, to their home. Joseph, the obedient and righteous man, does as commanded and immediately takes his family back to the land of Israel. Yet as they are approaching Judah, the area where Bethlehem and Jerusalem are located, Joseph learns that Herod's son, Archelaus, was now in power. As Joseph is dreaming, he receives a third visit from the angel. The angel warned him to go to Galilee for safety. Thus they ended up in Nazareth the city of Ga in Galilee where Jesus grew up and became a carpenter like his earthly father. The Gospel writer provides three quotations from the Old Testament prophets, with each being a fulfillment of prophecy. First, he uses words from the prophet Hosea in verse 15. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. 
This reference points back to the first exodus, when Israel being identified as God's son. In this passage, Jesus, the son of God, is called out of Egypt when Herod died and was no longer a threat. Second, Matthew cites Jeremiah when the prophet tells of Rachel weeping for her children in Ramah. Rachel, Jacob's wife and the mother of Israel, was lamenting the Israelites being taken into captivity in Jeremiah's day. And now she cries again due to the slaughter of the innocent children of Bethlehem under Herod's evil rule. And finally, the last line of the passage, he will be called a Nazarene. This was to fulfill the prophecies of Jeremiah and Zechariah that God would raise a righteous branch for David. The root of the word Nazarene means branch. This, thus, Jesus is the one rising from the line of King David, Israel's greatest king. The Savior is saved. The Deliverer is delivered. God brought Jesus into the world to be our Savior, to be the atonement for our sins. Yet, as an infant, our Savior needed to be saved. God, through his messengers, the angels guided and enabled Joseph to be the saving agent to protect and keep the Son of God safe from harm. And then, when all was safe, God brought Jesus back to Israel to be with his people. Again, using the angels to direct Joseph to deliver the Deliverer, the one who will deliver us from the bondage of sin and death. Friends, Joseph was incredibly obedient. He responded again and again to God's message, to God's call. May we strive to be like Joseph, to be humble and to obey our Savior with complete trust when we are called upon. Amen. Friends, thank you for worshiping with us today. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Blessed Lord, into our darkness, you have brought the light of your love. You have given to us a reminder of the many ways in which you care for us and guide us. This has been a hectic time for so many of us. We have invested ourselves, our energies, and our resources in a flurry of activities. And as the new year begins, we wonder how we are going to have the energy that the new year will demand. Help us place our trust and our lives in your care. As Joseph listened to the angel telling him to follow, help us follow you in all our ways. Give us strength and courage for the times ahead. Let love be the foundation from which all of our actions spring. Bless and keep us in your care. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
friends, receive the benediction. May the God of light and love and mercy be in your hearts and spirits on this day. Go in peace, and God's peace will go with you. Amen.